This right here is a Lincoln cent penny. In the United States of America, mint billions and billions of these little pennies every single year. Because there are so many of these pennies, people often think they're worthless and take these for granted. Pennies are also found in pocket change, and they're usually later in the streets too. They're not like people who don't really want them or think they're worthless. But the truth is, they aren't worthless. Just one single penny in good condition can be worth anywhere from hundreds up to even thousands of dollars. And that's why today I'm going to be showing you my U.S. coin collection, not just for price value, but the history involved with the actual coins too. But before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because for every single subscriber I get starting now until summer starts, I'm actually donating one cent to charity. And you guys have got to pick where, so comment down below where you want me to donate to and comment down below if you're already subscribed or if you just not subscribe. So please subscribe, it help a lot, and let's get back into the video. This is the majority of it right here. It's all stacked up right now. So I'm going to show you the individual ones first and then get started with the bigger things. For the individual coins like this one, I'm going to be telling you how much they're worth and what year they're minted. This is my oldest penny right here. It's an 1829 large cent penny. And it's really good in detail, but it does have some environmental damage, as you can see. It's graded by NCS. Sorry for the blurry camera. I'm actually holding it instead of the tripod now. But look at the back of it. You can really see all that detail on it. Hold on, let me get the camera to focus. There you go. There's it in the light so you can see it a bit better. I bought this one off of Amazon for $50, and it's worth about $45 in its condition. So that was a pretty good deal for this one this old. This is the next one. It's not in as good of shape. It's an 1838 large cent coin. And I actually got this one from an antique store earlier this summer. I really enjoy going to the antique stores because you can see all the available options. And it's just the easiest thing for me since I'm still in school and I, I don't know. It's just easy to go to and it's convenient. It's also fun to go look at things. This one was in a little plastic slot so you can slide it right out. I'm not going to touch it very much because I don't want to get it, my fingerprints all over it. But there's the front side. And that is the back side of it. And I really think this is pretty cool. This one is also very good shape for its age. It has some environmental damage to it regarding dirt and mainly soil. The people at the antique store said that, and you can see it on the coin, but it's still in really good shape. These are two of the later minted large cents, later minted down the line. I got these at the same time at the same antique store, and they're in really, really good, nice condition. It has the full Liberty name on its head, which is really good because a lot of them don't in this condition, or in this age, I should say. But it's there. You can't see it on the camera, though. The front is really nice, and the back is also really nice. I really like how the large cents say one cent on the back. With the... Just in that size. I really like this design, this air of the penny. And it's really cool to see. The 1853 is in a bit better condition. And the front's really nice, just like the last one. And the back is really, really nice. Which I think is, once again, really cool. I have this light shining above me, which is why there's a glare on it. So once again, I'm sorry for that. But you can kind of see the liberty on it from the camera. Pause it if you need. But that was once again really, really cool. I'm not going to be saying all the price values of the coins how much are worth now. Because some of them are worth a lot. And I don't want to give out all the information on them. And for the sake of time, I feel that it would be best just to go over the information. But I will give out a total at the end. Next, I have these two 1859 Indian head cents, and 1859 was the first year that they introduced these cents to the U.S., and I think it's really cool because it's the first year of their production, and it's from 1859 to 1909, which was the last year that they were produced, so I think it's cool to have both of them. This one on the left is not in as good condition, but the one on the right is in really good condition for how old it is. I'm going to show you some of the Indian heads at the same time, for the sake of time. But this is an 1863 Indian head scent. The background is really nice. Kind of smoothed out, but that's really good. 1864 is a lower vintage of 13.7 million. It has a bit of coercion on the front and on the reverse. But you can still see the one scent. And it's an older coin, so it is okay. 1867 is a pretty good year. Only 9.8. 8 million were minted, so that is a lower mintage indeed. It is in really, really good condition. You can really see the detail picking up on the back side. Unlike the other ones that we've been going over, this one is in extremely good condition, and it's a really cool year to have. 
1876 has an even lower mintage of only 7.9 million. It's not in the best shape, but it is in really good condition compared to a lot of coins from this year. In 1878, there are only 5.7 million of these pennies minted, so that is really cool to have. The lowest mintage of the Indian head sent was actually in 1877 with only 800,000 being minted. Closer to 900,000, but you get the point. Only 800,000 pennies were minted, so that year is extremely valuable. In 1879, the mintages go back up. There's doubling the amount of minted that are in this year. The back's kind of smoothed out, but it's a really cool year to have. In 1881, there were 39 million minted, and it's in way better shape than the last one. The back is in really good condition. You can see the detail coming through. 1892 has a darkened tone to it. You can still see the detail in it pretty good. It just has a darkened tone, just like the 1838 one did. 1897 has a really high vintage of 50 million, but it is in extremely good shape, which makes the value go up a lot on that one when it's in good shape like this. You can, sorry for my gross finger. You can see how good the shape is, and you can see how much detail shows on the back. This right here is 1919-09 Indian High Pennies. The minted numbered go up a whole lot during these years because these are closer to the end of when they were minted in 1900. 1900's also the beginning of a new century, which is really cool. That's why it's cool to have it's the transition year. 1901 is in really good condition. 79 million minted, though. 87 million, 85 million, 61 million, 80 million. In 1905, that's a really good condition penny compared to some of the other ones like 1900, which is understandable because of age. 1906 is really cool. 96 million minted though. In 1907, there were 108 million pen pennies minted, but look how good the condition is on that. It's graded as a fine, but it's still really good in my eyes. 1808 drops over 70 million. You can still see the details. It isn't as great as in 1907, but it's still good. 1909 is really, really nice. You can see the detail really clearly on that one. And you can kind of see the Liberty, which adds a bit of a value to it. This is the last year they were produced. And the back of that penny looks amazing. These are two of the, the side ones I have. I have the 1952S and the same individual, uh, I don't know what they're called, the same individual thing that the other ones are in. Pretty good condition. But this one, 1958, is in really good condition. It's not a proof coin, but it is an uncirculated condition, which I think is really cool. I'm going to come back to pennies in a little bit. I'm going to skip to nickels right now. I got a lot of these nickels from the antique stores, different antique stores. This nickel right here is a Liberty V nickel from 1897, which I think is really, really neat. Not in the best shape, but with its age, is really neat to have. You can see the V on the back. And the V on the back of the V nickels is a really cool design. Next up, there's a 1900 V nickel, which is really good condition compared to the last one. The face is smoothed out, though, so you can't see the detail on that. But look on the back. The V is in better shape. And look how cool that design looks. Here's another 1900 V nickel. It's different compared to toned. I think it has got toned more on the back due to soil or maybe something was built on it many years ago. But this is the very first year of the 20th century. 1904 is the next year I have for the V nickels. That is in really good shape compared to the last two. You can see the Liberty poking through on the top of the head, which is a really good sign. And the back of this coin just looks outstanding. My 1905 is a bit more smoothed out on the front, but on the back, the reverse, you can see the V very clearly. Not as distinguished around the edges of the coin, but towards the center, it stands out really nice. I have two 1906 Liberty V nickels and then a 1907 V nickel right there. I have another 1907 in my hand, and this one is in really good shape. That one, you can kind of see it, but this one is in really good condition compared to the last one. Especially the back. Look how nice that looks. Also, it says no tax because since it's already money, you can't put tax on the coins or U.S. currency, which I think is pretty neat. This is a 1908 Liberty V nickel. Got it for $4.99. Oh my gosh, I'm so clumsy at the antique store. Better condition than some of the other ones. The back looks pretty nice. It's a bit smooth out around the edges, though. I have another 1908 Liberty V Nichols from the same antique store. Different cost because it's not in the 
plastic slip like the other one was not in as good condition. This is a 1910 Liberty Bunic right here. Same antiques or same case as this 1908 right here. Pretty good condition. I have four Buffalo Nickels right here. The Buffalo Nickels aren't as expensive as some of the pennies were, but they are still pretty expensive from going to five, from five cents. 1920s, pretty good condition. Two dollars and thirty-five cents to buy. The background of the Buffalo Nickels is really cool. I really like it. 1923s, not as common for dates. Pretty common, but not as common as the other. It wasn't minted as much. Bought it for eight dollars. All these are from the same case, by the way, at the same store. 1926. The front looks really good. It's more of a common date, so it isn't worth as much. Got it for one dollar. Back looks really clean. 1928. Also looks really nice. That we bought it for one fifty. The back looks really nice and clean. Here are three Jefferson nickels I got from the same case as the other ones the same day. I already had these, but I thought they were in really good condition, and they weren't sold, being sold for that much, so I took my chance and got them. This one is from 1939, 1939 P. Extremely fine condition. Looks really, really nice. 1940, also P, Pennsylvania. Not Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. That's my bad. A 1940, fine condition, only 25 cents. That's still five times the face value, though, so that's kind of cool. 1943, this is that war nickel, which is really cool. It's silver. Silver made it in with it. Very fine condition. Bought it for $2, which I think is reasonable. And it is from San Francisco, which is really cool. I really like how the S looks up there. Just look, that just looks extremely cool. If you are still watching right now, I really, really appreciate it. If you are still watching, please like the video and leave a comment below. Please stay till the end if you are able to because it really helps a lot with watch hours. And we are so close to being monetized. Only not even 300 hours away from being monetized. And I really want to show you all these coins that I have collected over the years. I just think it's really cool. So, and I want to share that all with you. So thank you so much. These are my four Morgan Silver Dollars. And Morgan Silver Dollars are extremely cool. Like it says in the name, Morgan morgan dollar it's silver and it is worth a dollar all these are in fabulous condition this is from philadelphia the liberty is you can see the full liberty on it the back looks amazing look how nice that looks i have two 1886 morgan silver dollars this one is in really good condition the other one's in slightly better condition though look at how nice the eagle looks a dollar just like well they're all dollars since they're silver dollars you can see how nice the in god we trust and the eagle is shown on the back this is the second one it's 90 percent silver it's uncirculated you can see everything really clear look at the liberty all the letters of liberty are neatly shown the back it has a bit of toning added to it and a bit of stuff around the letters but that does not take away from the value because that's how good you can read them. I don't know. It says uncirculated on here and it is in an uncirculated value. Not a 70, but probably a 63, which I think is really, really cool. And it's not about value. It's about memories and knowing where they came from and just the history behind it. This is a 1921 Philadelphia Morgan Silver Dollar. And the condition on it is absolutely amazing. Look at that for just a second. Pause the video if you need to. Mint State 63 when graded, which is amazing. And that background is just astonishing. Not sure if I used that word right or not, but gave it my shot. That just look that looks amazing. Make sure to comment down which coin is your favorite in this video because I'm really curious to see what you all think. I go to the antique store quite often every other week or two. I've bought ten three half dollars from the antique store. This under here is a 1927 Walking Liberty silver half dollar. It's really smooth and not smooth. In, it's really smoothed out on the front, so it's not in the greatest shape. It's all the details smoothed off, just really flat. But that's okay. Still a cool piece of history. This one right here is from a decade earlier. It's actually 1917. I don't know why I showed the other one first. The detail is pretty, uh, it's not there, it's pretty smooth out as well. But it is a really cool coin to have, 1917, that's really old, especially for a half dollar. 
This is a Franklin Silver Half Dollar, the Ben Franklin Half Dollar, for short. I'm not sure that's shorter. Might even be longer, but you get the point. Very good condition. It has some stuff on the front, but that is just the whole year. 1956. Sorry for shaking the camera so much. My hand can't stay still. And the back looks really, really cool. Next up, I have a few bills that I want to show you. A lot of these are from the antique store, too. This is a $2 bill from 1928, as you can see it's down there. And the cool thing is, in the early 1900s, it was believed that $2 bills would bring you bad luck. And that you'd have to rip off the corner to get the bad luck to go away. It, it stated that if you inherited a $2 bill, you would have to get rid of it as fast as you could. Which most likely would lead to spending it. And in order to get the bad luck away from you, you would have to spend it and tear off a corner. And for the, the bad luck to disappear forever, it was said that each person that inherited it, or that it crossed paths with, had to tear off a corner and do the same thing until all four corners were torn off. Then the bad luck would still remain. And as you can see, only one corner is torn off. So I'm not sure what that means for me, but I have it now. I just think it's a cool piece of history. I have quite a bit of ones here. I think it's either four or five. I think it's four. This one right here is from 1935. I think it's cool. I actually have three one dollar bills from 1935. Well, that one's not from 1935. I'm stupid. Uh, don't call your don't call yourself stupid, guys. I I didn't I shouldn't have said that. Uh, that's from 1957. But this one right here. It's from 1935. So those three right there are from 1950, 1935. And this one right here is from 1957. I think that's just really cool to have bills from this old. I have coins from the early 1800s, but this is paper, and paper does not last that long. So I just think that's really cool. This is another $2 bill. It's actually a 22 karat gold edition $2 bank note. It's from 2017. It's gold plated with 22 karat gold. Just cool, uh, decorative bill. It is still a real $2 bill issued by the government. It was just added on later in the process. And you can still find these probably on Amazon. And some banks can tell you where to get them. But I got this at a Christmas gift a few years back. And it is really cool to have. I have the proof set from 2009. Every coin that was minted that year. Which is really cool. You have the President's... State coins, the presidential joint coins. Yo, William Henry, John Tyler, James Polk, and Zachary Taylor. Hopefully I pronounced their names right. Each a dollar, which I think is really cool. These are all proof strikes, so they are different from the ones minted for the everyday people. These usually minted in San Francisco, but it can be from a different minted area in some circumstances. These are all the quarter that are minted that year. That's really cool. 2009 was actually the Lincoln Memorial Year. Regarding his... I think it was the 200th year since he became president. Sorry, not president. His birth. Which I think is extremely cool. As you can see right there. All four backgrounds through his life. Which is really, really neat. And this last one. 2009 dime. Nickel. Half dollar Amasaka Jawea coin, which is really cool. But I do believe that's a dollar as well. Which is really, really neat to have in my collection. This is another strip of coins from 2009. You got the half dollar from 2009, the quarter, nickel, dime, and penny. These are not proof, which I think is cool because these are just a regular minted ones. I think it's cool because the other ones are proof strikes. These, now you can have one of the regular ones too. Which I think is really neat since they're all together. This right here is from the earlier state quarters, which is really cool. You got Massachusetts, Maryland, North, no, not North, South Carolina, New Hamp, no, I can't read that. Yes, New Hampshire, I was right, and Virginia. In front of it, all in nice condition. My friend actually got this for me when we were in sixth grade. Haven't talked to him in a while, but that's one of the things that started me, that led to me collecting coins. I need to make a video about that. This isn't the reason, but this is one of the big causes of me collecting coins this right here which is just cool to look back on my grandma got this for me it's a queen elizabeth memorial coin and it's really cool 
Obviously, you can't just go spin this out at the grocery store, but it's really cool. I have it in the packaging still. I've opened it. It's like a little book inside, but I keep it in here just so it can stay nice and doesn't get worn. On top of here, I have some random coins. There's a James Garfield dollar coin, Susan B. Anthony dollar coin, and I have three quarters from 2021. I don't know why they're up here, though. 2023 quarter. That was the first one that I got from 2023, so that was cool. 1936 penny. I just... That one was more recent, so I haven't put it in the container yet with my 1936s. And my friend got me this 1890 Indian penny, which is really nice of them. There are some scratch marks on the top, but it's over 130 years old, so... I really appreciate that. I also have a few coins from different currencies, as you can see right here, which I think is really, really awesome. And at the bottom, there are some coins from Canada. I'm going to feel really stupid if it isn't Canada, but I think Canada. Canadian pennies down here at the bottom. I hope they're Canadian pennies at least. Oh, yeah. you do. Yeah. Canada. I See, I was right. I don't know why I'm trying to prove that to myself. But, yes, I have some Canadian pennies, some... I bet that you, that's a quarter right there, and that's their half dollar. I don't know. I'm not very good with other currencies, but I do think that is their half dollar, which is really, really neat. It's in really good condition. 25 cents. Says Canada again. 2014. So, yes. Looks pretty uncirculated to me. Under all those coins, I have the America the Beautiful Quarter Collection which is the National Park Quarters and other state monuments. It is not completed. I don't have very many of them. I haven't put all of them in the book yet either. I have a container of quarters under the desk below me right now. But these are the ones that I have. There's things like the Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, and then, yeah, the Arches, Great Sand Dunes. I'm actually going there this summer, so that's a, one of my videos planned out already. Hopefully that's enjoyed by everyone. Yeah, so those are some of the things. The Plaza Islands. Mer I don't know how to say that, but yeah, you, you get the point. So it's pretty cool. I, and I need to finish that here pretty soon. This right here is a tub of some of my, not tub. This is a container of some of my wheat scents from the later years. 1940 to the last year they were minted, 1959. When the Indian head stopped being minted in 1909, the wheat scent came along, so wheat scent was minted in 1909 to 1958. I have the stickers on the front so I can know which divider is which coin without messing them up and getting them unorganized. But, yeah. That is really cool. I have a whole lot of 1958s there. I'm not sure. I have a whole stack of books over there. Not books, but... Holders of coins in them, so these are the extra ones that I do not have in there. But it's still cool to keep, still part of history, and still the one thing that I enjoy collecting. If you made it this far, please do not click off yet because the video is almost done, and I'm bad to get at those books over there, so I do not want you to miss that. Most people use the other books, but I like these because they have the little clear protectors that slide in and out. I don't know if you can see that, but they're right there, which I think is pretty cool. Right here, I have quite a few little plastic containers that I store different coins in. Oh, I'm trying to get it open with only one hand. There we go. I think these right here are nickels from 1964. Yep. 1964 nickels, which is pretty neat. There is a 1963 right there. Turn it around. There we go. So that is pretty darn neat. Right here, I actually have a container of 1943 steel pennies. This is when, these are pennies, but this is when that they were not allowed to use copper for the war, so they had to use steel pennies instead. Which is pretty neat, because they actually stick to the magnet, and it's the only year that they were supposed to make them like this. So that is incredible. Next up, I have some quarters from the 1960s. I have the rest of the quarters in my book over there, but that is 1965, 67, 66, I got them out of order right there, another 67, 69, and another 69. This one here is in better condition, that's pretty cool. Some scratch marks across his face and forehead right there, but that is okay. 
the Eagles also really nice on those, and I really like these. Uh, this design of the U.S. These are 2022 quarters. I'm not going to take them out just for the sake of time. I think there's like seven or eight of them in there. I don't know why I have them in there. I just put them to the side since they were newer, and they can stay nice and not get messed up in the quarter container that I keep under my desk for unsearched quarters and ones that I'm still currently going through. I'm not going to take these out for the sake of time either, but this is what I was talking about when I was showing you the 2009 pennies for the Lincoln, uh, his birthday recognition, requisition, or whatever, however you pronounce that. So I have a whole container of them right here, and that's pretty cool. They're all the different backgrounds. I have all four backgrounds, actually. I'm not sure what this coin is or if it's even real, to be sure, but this is how it sounds. So it sounds like a real coin. I'm not sure... Uh, my history teacher said it looked like a Chuck E. Cheese token because I asked them about that. I wasn't sure they would know if it was like a U.S. coin or anything, but I've never seen it before. At first, I thought it was like a Viking coin. I actually found it last year on the bus, which I probably shouldn't have taken, but yeah, I was kind of interested, so I took it home to do some research, and I couldn't find anything. So if you know what this is or if it's even real at all, please let me know down in the comments below because look at that face. That just, like, intrigues me. It looks like a Viking token. In this container, I have a few more 2009, which is what the other bucket was, too. And this one, in 2004, 2005, and I think maybe 2003, they did different designs on the nickel, which I thought was really cool. They did a Louisiana purchase and put some events from history on there, from U.S. history, obviously, that are pretty cool. These are the, sorry for the camera going off screen. These are the bicentennial, I can't pronounce that word, but often called the drummer boy quarter. I have three of them celebrating our states. No, not our state, the country, <laughs> not the state, the country for 200 years, 1776 to 1976. And that is the background of these quarters, which is pretty cool. I really like the background, the drummer boy, so I thought it would be cool to share. There is another 2021 quarter, so crossing the Delaware, that's a really nice background. My fingers are like bleeding for some reason, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm doing the video. This is 2009 quarter, so I put that to the side. I really like the background of it. So this is the last thing I have to go through right here is these books, and I'm really excited to show you, so please stick till the end. I have more Indian pennies, 1900 and 1909 are there. Don't have the Lincoln scent from 1909, but that is okay. 1910 Lincoln scent. I'm missing a few of the earlier ones in the teens. 1916 and 17. Don't have 18. I have 19, 20, 21. I'm missing 22, but I have 23 all the way through 30. I'm missing 31, 32, 33. And then I had 34 and 35, so I'm missing just only a few on this one. I'm going to turn around so you can see the reverses. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but I struggle, so that's okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot I flipped it. There are the end United pennies down at the bottom. Their background is really nice. But look at those. That's just so cool seeing how old these are. This is my second page of Lincoln Sense. I don't put all the different mint in here like Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Denver. I only do one from each year. I keep the other uh, mints in a different book, but I have one of each year. 1936. There's the 1943 still penny I was talking about. This is my best one that I have. 1950s in really good condition. And I'm going to turn it over just so you can see. There's the size compression in my hand, by the way. This is the clear thing I was talking about. It slides in and out. Yeah, I almost broke it one time though, so that wasn't good. One of the still penny looks so cool. Look at that background. This one is 1972 to 2007, and I have all of them in here as well. This one is 2008 all the way up to 2022. I don't have a 2023 penny yet. I'm not even sure if they've put those out into the public yet. I only found a 2023 quarter the other day, so I don't know where all these coins are, but I do not have them yet. The quarter changed so many times. They did the Washington Quarter with the Eagle in the back, and then they did the 
state quarters, and then the, and then they did like the national park quarters, and then they did 2021 quarter, and then they changed 2022, and now they have 2023 on it, on the 2023 to the side, so they just keep on changing it. So my first two quarters, little slots, I have not even put anything in them yet, but the third one starts at 1965, and the bottom one on this page is 1974. I don't have that many quarters. But this book is going to go from 1932 all the way down to 1998 when they stopped making the ones with the eagles on the back like that. Uh, my, my favorite design of the quarter is the eagle, though. It's original and, I don't know, it's just cool to look at to me. I do not have a single dime in this one. I usually don't put the older dimes in here, but sometimes I do. 1946 is my oldest dime. And then it continues to go up little by little. This one, I'm only missing one dime on this whole page. And it is 1978. And I don't know how I haven't found it yet because that's not a lower mintage or anything. This one, don't have a 2009 here. I have that in the proof set though and in the other container. But they're in pretty good condition for the most part. Nickels, I have a lot of buffalo nickels in the slots. Let me find them. I have a lot of buffalo nickels on these, but once I buy those from the antique store, I don't take them out and put them in here. So, these are the, the only buffalo nickels I have in here are the ones I find in pocket change and stuff. I found a 1936 buffalo nickel just by going through change, which I thought was incredible. These are some of the older ones. That one l looks really old, but it's not. It's 1962, so not as old as the other ones. Not very many in that one. I have almost filled out this whole one. I these are some of the later 60s. I don't have 67, 66, 65 for the nickels. And I filled out this whole one, this whole thing except for the bottom. That's 2022. And just like the penny, I don't have a 2023 nickel either, which I'm not sure why. I don't know where they are. These are half dollars. I only have two Kennedy half dollars, 1972 and 1973, which I both found in my room, which is really, really weird. When I was like nine, I found like a 1925 penny under my bed, which is what got me interested in coins in the first place. I just think it's really, really strange that they just appear in here. But that is actually it. I've already started putting some things up when I've taken breaks to edit the video and stuff. But I'm really happy you all stuck around to watch. The total value of all this stuff is over $1,000. But I stopped saying prices because I wasn't really concerned about that. I just think it's cool. To have history. Like this right here. That's cool because it's a $2 bill from 1928. And the conspiracy theory of tearing off the corners. That just adds even more value to me. Like mental value, not physical. I don't know. Coins are just cool. So thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you being here with me. Thanks for watching to the end if you did. Because it really helps me out. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button and comment down below which coin was your favorite because I really enjoyed all of this stuff. And it's really fun. I just really enjoy collecting it. So please subscribe because for every subscriber I get until summer starts, I'm donating one cent to charity. And I hope all of you have an amazing rest of your weekend and I'll see you all next Saturday. Bye everyone.